G'day Internet and welcome back to another video and part 2.2 of my Commodore 64 rescue. This time around we're going to look at the power supply and as I mentioned at the tail end of my uh, previous video where we fixed the case, I've been a naughty boy and I've been simply using an unmodified original power supply. Now, the reason that's not a good thing, these things are known to let go on their 5 volt line, pump too much voltage into your Commodore and destroy the machine. Needs to say, that's not a good thing. Uh, and as they get older and older, the chances of that happening get higher and higher. So to begin with, let's go through one thing. There are essentially two types of power supplies, they look a bit different, but two types of power supplies for the Commodore 64. There is this black one that we're going to look at today. Uh, and the reason we're going to be looking at this is these are hollow. These have simply got the components in them on a board um, and you can pull them apart really, really easily. The other type of power supply usually looks something similar to this. Now, the problem with these is they're completely chock full of epoxy or some kind of resin. They're full and you can't get to any of the components. Now there are ways of actually cracking that epoxy uh, and gutting the case completely. Uh, and if I can find the video, I'll put a link somewhere of someone who has done that. Um, and once you get past that point, what we're going to do today to this power supply can actually easily, easily be applied to this one. But for today, we're going to uh, look at the black one. So let's take a look at what we need to do. Here is our power supply. Uh, and it is one of the black ones that isn't full of epoxy. Uh, so we can actually do something with it. Uh, now, I've already actually uh, removed the cover uh, and also simply desoldered the leads. The way these are made up is that's essentially, that's a nine volt AC power uh, transformer that's a five volt power supply and that gives us our five volt DC and nine volt AC, which goes into the Commodore 64. Those bits there are now junk. We're going to be replacing them with a modern nine volt AC uh, transformer and a mean well five volt power supply. The one thing, the one change we are going to make is this. Uh, previously, the mains lead came in this way and the C64 was that way, if it, that makes sense. Uh, we're actually going to switch it around, primarily because um, the mean well has got some nice screw down clamp lugs, so it's easier and probably safer to feed the 240 volt into here uh, and then utilizing these out to this. So essentially, they will also get screwed in there like that if that makes sense uh, and then the, also then obviously 9 volt AC out here uh, and 5 volt DC out there so let me get a few bits and bobs together and we'll kind of put this all together okay so with a little bit of trimming that we'll do later this is essentially where the bits will sit this has got screw holes in the bottom we'll work that out uh, the wings on this are a bit wide to fit in the plastic here so I'll either trim the plastic or I'll trim these but essentially that's where it's going to sit. So these cables here need to come round and they will screw into the lugs on the five volt power supply there. So we know they need to be about that long. So we can trim these. All right, uh, and then we can not get caught up in the microphone cable and carefully trim these off a smidge. We don't want heaps, just shy of 10 mil, I'm guessing. Except it doesn't want to trim. Right, that one trimmed. Where's the blue one being annoying? Right, there we go. Uh, they're pretty much right to go. The only thing I am going to do is reach for my solder and I'm gonna tin these. And the reason I'm doing this, it's not actually necessary, is 
I'm a little paranoid about little strands of wire um, kind of poking out and shorting. That's all it is. So I'm basically just using the solder to seal up the ends because that's how I roll. Right, okay, so that will go there. This needs to go in here. Righto, little plastic cover comes off. We'll back off the two AC lugs. Uh, yep, and uh, blue is our neutral, so it will go in here and we'll carefully hold it in place and clamp down. Obviously we're going to be coming back out of this in a minute, but that's okay. Uh, and brown is our live, so it will go in here. And so that's a already a pretty reasonable start. So that all kind of will sit there like that. Uh, what we could do now is actually wire in our mains lead. Uh, this is looking a bit average, so I'm going to get rid of it, split it a little, trim it, trim it. and tin the ends. Right, obviously this cable is not color coded, uh, but after running a multimeter across it, I know that one there is our neutral. So we should be able to back this screw off, poke this in the other side, clamp it back down with the blue one kind of not falling out, clamp that down good, and there we go, it's nice and solid. Now we can now do the same with the active or live. Right, and there we go. So what is, we've essentially done there is given both the 5 volt and the 9 volt AC their 240 volt mains power. So this here now is our lead that goes to the DIN connector which goes to the Commodore 64. What I want to do is, I'm obviously going to reuse this, but the end, the longest length is obviously the 5 volt, uh, and it will kind of route around and do funny things and end up there, but it also needs to split off to the 9 volt. So I think I want to trim the insulation back to about, about there. So I need to remove that much of uh, the insulation. So there's our leads. Um, so these will go in here. Obviously two of them will clamp to the 5 volt and the other two will get soldered to the transformer. So running through the cable with a multimeter, I know what my colors are. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the 9 volt. Uh, now I've got, this is a multi-tap transformer, but I know I've got 9.5 volt here. So we'll tin this and zero over here. Righto. Now length. Uh, I want these two. Where are we? Trying to keep some kind of cable neatness. Right. 
So these will go there like that. So I want about, that one's nearly perfect, but uh, that much and uh, which way do I want to come? That much. Trim the end. Trim the end. Okay, so you will go in here. We can kind of take this out. Nice if it stopped fraying. There we go. Just enough to hold it in place. And Let's add a ridiculous amount of more solder to it. And of course it moved. Right, and because this will be like this. Uh, I probably put a bit too much tinning on this one. Jam me through, good. More solder. Okay, that's those two done. Now it's just a case of, and these are already pre-soldered, these will go into the plus and minus. Uh, of the mean well. Now, pink is my plus. So you go there. And you go in here. And that is well, it. Uh, that will kind of sit in the case, something like that. Um, there's our mains. There's our five pin din. So what I'm going to do now is on my clean bench, uh, once I remove all my little bits of solder splatter, I'm actually going to test this as is with the multimeter to make sure I haven't royally screwed something up. So, I should have five volts here. No, five volts here. No. Whoop. That's me having a bad connection. Five volts. It's there. This plug's just a bit dirty. Right. And we should have nine volts AC across the top two pins. Ten and a half. It's not under load. Right, that looks really good. So next is mounting all this mess. Okay, so we've basically got two things to mount, obviously. I'm going to worry about the 5 volt one first. It needs to sit kind of there. And what that is going to require, there's a bunch of little kind of standoffy things at the bottom. And it's going to require removing, which way do I want to do this? There's no real good way. Okay, it's basically going to require removing both the inner rows. So 
with the help of some flush cutters. Okay, that's not too bad. And if I flip this over, you can see we have access to the two screw holes. So give me a minute to find some screws that will work. Okay, with some screws obtained, this is a little tricky, but because we kind of need to hold that in place like so, but the slats here are a little tight, so we kind of need to both screw it through the plastic thing, uh, slats, but also then screw it into the power supply and hope that it all stays lined up, and that one did. And the other one. This one is not being as successful because the power supply keeps moving around underneath. Right, and ah, they're actually short enough that the, the thing still sits on its feet too. Nice. This on the other hand is, well, this one's a little bit more tricky, especially since a wire just came out, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, I need to get it as far that way as possible so we have room to route the cable through like that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim the ears off, the metal ears here. Because um, we'll still have the sides of this loop to clamp down on. And we'll go from there. So what I need is a felt tip pen. If we look at it from this angle and try and get it as centered as possible about there so i want to trim this ah stop moving there and there Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wander off to the garage and attack this with an angle grinder and I will be back. So one trip to the garage later and as you can see it is sitting now inside this little kind of cagey bit. And what I'm going to tr attempt to do is mark these positions with a pencil, sort of, or at least good enough. With my head in the way of the camera, I already know that. And in theory, I should have a couple of markings, and I do. One is there, one is there. So we now need some holes. I'm going to grab my uh, pin vise, just with that carefully out of the way, and I'm going to mark some centers. I'm not expecting this to be particularly tough plastic. It's not. All right, I think that went through. It did. And the other one. Right, oh, one looks a bit off. Why is that? I'm sure, it all will work out. Okay, cordless drill. Certainly don't need that bit. And I need to find a drill bit roughly the right size. You look close enough. And let's put some holes in it.
And with any luck, fingers crossed, this should line up with those holes. One, two, beautiful. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna nut and bolt it, but we're gonna put the screws up from the bottom, which is going to make this quite tricky because we need to get the nut down from this direction. So we, what I want is screws that are slightly longer than the ones I used a minute ago. I want washers top and bottom and a nut for each. Okay, so what I'm gonna use is some needle nose pliers and attempt what could possibly be the impossible, but we'll see how we go. So, washer on the screw. You through there. Now, what I'm going to attempt to do is drop a washer over that. Which could be easier said than done. Eh, no. No. Oh, here's a point. The wash is going to fit in there. I didn't even think of that. And to make matters worse, I'm not sure if I can get a nut in there either. Let's try the other side and see how we go. Because this one ended up being slightly further out. We may have to skimp on the top washer. If I can get a nut down there though, that will be a miracle. Eh, I only need a couple of turns. All right, that's tight-ish. Let's see what, what went on with this other hole. Okay, I need to elongate it slightly that way. Not pretty, but functional. So, screw, washer, sit you down. Shuffle it over a bit. Uh, and reattempt the impossible. Woo! Got it. Right, that's both screws and nuts in.
and neither of those are going anywhere. Now what I want is the, some of the bits that I originally pulled out. We've got our clamps and we've got all our original screws. Uh, let's get some of this other stuff out of the way. Don't run away. Okay, so we want this to kind of go... Uh, what do we got? Mm, okay. We want this to tuck in there like that. So we want to put a clamp down there. Right. And the other side, which just simply goes in there, you can kind of just go like that, I guess. Uh, it'd be nicer if it had a bit of a twist in it, like so, but this is not going to make it easier because it's coming in from the side and there's nothing really to hold it straight, but All right, and there's our strain relief. And now we can just take the lid and that should just go straight on top. Well, it should go straight on top. What's it blocking? And that'll go on there like Okay, quick update. Uh, within minutes of me uh, actually uploading this video for the first time, uh, someone point, a few people pointed out something that I should have thought about and didn't. Because we have exposed screws on the bottom, both these devices should actually be earthed. And if you remember, we're using a simple two-core power uh, with a two-prong lead, uh, and which means we basically don't have earth. So what we're going to do is this. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, removing this lead. And be gone. So that can go away. What I have here is a standard IEC power, like computer power lead, that I've already stripped back. And we have our uh, neutral live, and this one has an earth. Now, the mean well has an earth on it. So let's start there, and we simply wire these in to here. Right, so that's the earthing on this taken care of, that's fine. However, what we do need is to earth the transformer. There's various ways you can go about it, but the simplest is simply to run an earth strap to the lug, one of these lugs. Now, if you remember, I decided not to cut the plastic and cut the ears instead so it sat down. That has now bitten me in the ass because uh, I have here... I think we'll go that way, we'll go that way. I'm never going to get a lug onto that screw while it's buried right down there. So I am going to have to trim this plastic. Okay, that's at least cut all the way down to the bottom, and now we should be able to snap it out, and we can. Right, that bit's now gone. Now we can uh, put this back in. Do I just do the other side? No.
Okay. Uh, I think we had another wire come loose, didn't we? We did. All right, I'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to run something to there. What I've got is I've got a simple iLoop lug, um, which will hopefully fit in there. Sort of, might have to put a bit of a kink into it. But what we want to do is we want to strip back some wire. Uh, we want to strip it back about yay much. This goes into here. But what we're going to do, I might actually just strip a smidge more. What we're going to do is we're actually going to drop some solder onto this, purely for safety's sake. And because I can't find my proper crimpers, I'm going to use a nasty big pair of needle nose pliers. Right, that's in there, good. Now that this is soldered up, we can start putting it back together. Let's put that in there. Uh, I'm going to now drop a washer on, actually, no, sorry. I'm going to drop, what do you call these serrated washers? I don't know, but anyway, I'm gonna call it a serrated washer. And I'm gonna carefully plonk you down then I'm going to put my lug and then attempt to put a washer on top of that, which I nearly had until the wire moved. Let's try that again. Okay, you're on and then our wee little nut, hopefully before it all pops apart. At least I can get my fingers in there now to get it started. Good. Right, and now we screw that up nice and tight. Okay, that's in there good. Right, so now we want to route this round to here. And we want to put it into the other side of the neutral lug that's there. So I want about, I want to cut it about there. So that's that. We can now put this part of our wiring back in with its little clamp. Okay, and now this needs to, this is a lot thicker bit of wire now. Uh, it just doesn't quite I think what I want to do, uh, all right, that's going to have to come back out again. And I'm going to have to bring this insulation further back. Now, let's put this back together again, again. And we should be able to kind of do get that bent at a good enough angle. Should be able to get that in there like that and then get this down on top of it. Okay, now all I have to do is screw the cover back on and we're good to go. So as you can see, once you've gutted this power supply, it's 
pretty straightforward. It's 240 volt in, or 110, depending on where in the world you are. Um, split that off to the meanwhile power supply and the transformer, and then output from those two things out to your DIN cable. That's kind of it. Now, obviously we're playing with mains uh, power here, and even I get quite nervous uh, when doing that. So please be careful. Um, and if you're not 110% confident on doing this kind of thing with power supplies, please get find someone who is, and then show them this video and get them to then subscribe. But that's pretty much it. Uh, and the components that we used for this one, once you've gutted this, are you can put use the same components in here and screw them down to the base and you end up with the same kind of idea. The only things I would like to add to this, I think, would be uh, a fuse, uh, maybe on the AC side, uh, and also an AC cutout switch, Just that's just personal preference. The only downside of that is these are already, once you've put the transformer and the mean well in here, there's not much space left. Now, the Meanwhile has its own um, uh, voltage protection, uh, over voltage protection, so that's pretty well taken care of. And the transformer uh, I use does have its, uh, basically its own internal fuse. Um, the downside obviously is that if it goes, uh, you've got to replace the whole transformer, but we've just shown you how to do that. So that'll do for today. Uh, if you like the video, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.